Careful for today's video if you're weary of spoilers. This is our second Comic Origins or Complete History video for the film Venom Let There Be Carnage, and if you missed our first episode, check it out now with the card on the screen. It's the complete history of Cletus Cassidy and his symbiote Carnage. However, that video is a bit longer than today's video. I had already decided within the first 10 minutes of the film that I was going to be making this video when I identified the name Pat Mulligan. As the film continues, the character of Detective Mulligan is involved in a battle with Shriek and he's left seemingly altered. And I don't know exactly what the future holds for this version of the character, but today's video is going to cover the comic origins and history of Pat Mulligan, the man who would go on to become Toxin. Pat Mulligan's first appearance is in Venom vs. Carnage No. 1, written by Peter Milligan and drawn by the insanely talented Clayton Crane. This book was marketed right from the beginning as being a book about the birth of a new symbiote, so it was evident right from the beginning that a new one was coming. The issue opens with Venom and Carnage battling. There's no setup, it's just those two fighting it out in the streets. It becomes quickly evident through the dialogue that Carnage is about to become a papa, something he's not too pleased about. Also, just as a side note, if you haven't watched my Carnage video and you don't know this already, remember that symbiotes reproduce asexually. They just give birth randomly. There's no alien space boot knocking required to make this happen. Carnage makes it very clear that he has no intention of being a dad, and he threatens to kill the infant symbiote as soon as it's born. Cassidy burrows deep underground and apparently births a new symbiote, weakening him by a really drastic amount. Officer Pat Mulligan is on the scene and he has a brief run-in with Carnage, where Carnage threatens him claiming that if he was stronger he would kill him right where he stood. Which is a weird thing to say because Pat's just a regular officer and Carnage is an insanely powerful supervillain. Carnage ends up leaving, fearing a showdown with Venom that he wouldn't be powerful enough to win. We also at this time see an infant symbiote on Mulligan's back, signaling that the symbiotic bonding process had already begun between the new infant symbiote and Pat. We next see Officer Pat Mulligan at his home with his pregnant wife discussing their family's future and him recounting his run-in with Carnage. Venom arrives having tracked down the infant offspring and starts to interrogate Mulligan, asking him if he plans to keep the infant safe. Mulligan, terrified of course, agrees, believing Venom is talking about his own son and his wife's womb. Little does he know that Venom is actually talking about the infant symbiote that's growing symbiotically within him now. Spider-Man arrives to try and stop Venom, which he believes is there to do Venom things like kill people. Venom and Spider-Man discuss that the infant symbiote is the 1,000th symbiote in his family's lineage, and without Venom's guidance, it may be the victim of genetic degradation that would cause it to break down and go insane, much like Carnage. And a discussion between Spider-Man and Venom is going about as good as you can expect when Carnage arrives back to full strength and begins to attempt to kill Pat. He flings his wife down an elevator shaft, forcing Spider-Man to rescue her, and then she goes into labor so Spider-Man has to rush her off to the hospital. Meanwhile, Carnage kind of absconds with Mulligan, desperate to kill the infant that is living inside of him, and Black Cat, who was robbing an art gallery at the time, happens across the conflict and steps in to save Mulligan. She quickly becomes the object of Cassidy's attention until Venom returns and fights Carnage. Venom battles Carnage in the subway, announcing that he's come up with a name for the infant offspring, Toxin, although it had not matured yet. Venom incapacitates Carnage using electricity from the subway rails and leaves. We next see Mulligan, whose wife had given birth caused by the stress of the event. Also side note, Spider-Man sent them flowers because he's a friendly neighborhood guy. But Mulligan ends up going back to work, where his fellow officers notice that he's faster and stronger. Keep in mind, Mulligan still doesn't know that he has a symbiote inside of him. Spider-Man and Venom do, but no one clued in old Pat. Back at the precinct, they're reviewing tape of Black Cat stealing artwork, and Pat decides to track her down. She attacks him after he won't accept her terms of assistance, and shockingly, he's much faster and stronger than she is. And Pat kind of explains to her that he doesn't really need anything from her other than assistance in understanding what's going on with him. But they don't have much time as Cassidy bursts into the apartment ready to kill everybody. Pat spontaneously transforms into a fully matured toxin symbiote and kicks his ass. 
I'm not kidding. Toxin absolutely mops Carnage, who he flings a block away in one move. And at this point, Pat freaks out because he realizes he has an alien symbiote living inside of him finally. Pat returns home to a party for his newborn, but can't shake the feeling that he needs to track down Cassidy and understand more. Instinctively, Pat is able to hunt down Cassidy, using senses he doesn't fully understand, and a fight breaks out with Carnage where he again absolutely mops the floor with Carnage, but he's unable to bring himself to kill him and he flees. Venom meets up with Carnage and the two decide to form a temporary alliance to hunt down Toxin. Meanwhile, Pat decides to use the Toxin symbiote to stop a robbery. He even jokingly threatens to kill and eat the brains of the robbers who identify him as a cop. Spider-Man even arrives on the scene and witnesses the events and gives Toxin the old that'll do speech. It's next shown where Pat is attending a funeral for Black Cat's partner, who died when Carnage tracked Pat to her safe house, when he's again attacked, this time by Carnage and Venom who get the upper hand and almost kill him. Black Cat stalls them long enough for Spider-Man to arrive and turn the tables. Toxin beefs up literally and kicks the crap out of both Venom and Carnage. They end up battling inside of a mausoleum and literally crush graves and corpses, until eventually Toxin beats them so badly that they flee permanently. When Pat returns home, a small decomposed finger falls out of his shirt into his baby's crib and he realizes that being Toxin is going to potentially put his family in real danger, so he decides to leave. Forever. Which is kind of messed up. Toxin goes on to become a hero, working with the Avengers and Spider-Man, but Pat struggled with being a hero and the emotional toll of leaving his family for a period of time as well. He did end up working with Spider-Man to hunt down Razor Fist and eventually learn to gain mastery of the Toxin symbiote and become a hero. And that is about it for the comic book origins of Pat Mulligan and Toxin. Now, Toxin does eventually go on to become bonded with other characters in the Marvel Universe, including probably the most famous one, Eddie Brock, the person who most often wears the Venom symbiote. But that is about it for today's video, so I hope you learned a lot, and if you did, consider liking and subscribing and do all of those other things that YouTubers ask you to do. This has been Nick from Key Issues, thank you for watching, and remember the motto, Toxin over everything.